Hello, my name is Frank Saratella. For those of you who are new to the channel, um, I'd like to welcome you. I'm a miracle. Jesus gave me a second chance in life in 2012. He changed my life in 1984. If you'd like to read more on my testimony, please click the link below um, and you will find it on a midnightcry.com. That is my website. On it, you will find all sorts of uh, study tools. Um, I've got five books that are written and published on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. You can read them in their entirety for free. There's no charge for anything on my website. Um, this video, to be quite honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, um, I really thought I was going to be done doing videos for a while, but the Lord really impressed upon me to, to do this because people, whether they are Christians or non-Christians, see that something dramatic is taking place in America and the world. And what's taking place is people are starting to pray like they've never prayed before. It's noble, but it's wrong. And allow me to explain to you why. It's not about the quantity of praying. It's about our quality of praying. And what is more important is letting God talk to us and not us talking to God. You have to remember what it says in God's Word. I believe it's uh, Isaiah 65, 24 that says that before they speak, I will answer, and yet while they're speaking, it'll come to pass. God knows what we are going to pray, ladies and gentlemen. Hosea 6, 4 says that God's people go to hell for their lack of knowledge. And that lack of knowledge is twofold. It's lack of knowledge of what's in God's Word and lack of knowledge of what's in our heart. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, how can God talk to us if we don't read his word? Oh, we can pray and pray and pray, but if we're living, if we're living in sin, according to Psalm 66, I believe, 66, 18, it says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And also in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 through 3. You see, ladies and gentlemen, and I'd like to address Catholics also. It's not about how many Our Fathers you say or Our, Our Hail Marys. That's what Jesus calls vain repetition in Matthew 6, verse 7. It's heart to heart, and it's in sincere brokenness that God hears us. The broken and contrite heart, God hears. The humble heart, God hears. And what God is asking for and what God is looking for is humility and for us to turn from our sin, repenting, bearing fruit and keeping with that repentance. Repentance means changing. I no longer love my sin. I love Jesus more than my anger. I love Jesus more than lust. I love Jesus more than pride. Turning from sin, bearing fruit and keeping with that repentance. The word if is a conditional word, if. It is used 1,455 times in the Word of God, which tells us that God is a conditional God. All this garbage that we've been preached about, that God loves you unconditionally, does He love us? Yes. God is love. Yes. But we cannot, and for too long, we've tried to play Him for a fool. And that is all now coming to an end, ladies and gentlemen. The God who sits in the heavens, the God who sits between the cherubims, whose heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool, the Lord God is quickly, very soon, going to protect his integrity, especially when he shows the whole world, when he kills the four televangelists, Jim Baker, John Shorey, Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Meyer, all on the same day. God will be cleaning house. And now, ladies and gentlemen, is the time to start preparing your hearts. Read the Word of God. Let God talk to you. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we've been so brainwashed by churches and churchianity, as I like to call it. You have to pray and come to prayer meetings and prayer meetings. We should be spending 80% of our time in the Word of God and 20% of our time praying to God. It's the Word of God that cleanses our mind. It's the Word of God that cleans our heart. 
It's the Word of God that teaches us what God requires of us. It's the Word of God that teaches us how to walk. It's the Word of God that gives us and teaches us how to possess the heart of Jesus. And that's what's important, is having the heart of Jesus. It's more important for God to talk to us than us talk to God. If we have a relationship, and I do all the talking, and I never let you talk, it's a one-sided relationship, and the relationship wouldn't last very long. It would probably end quickly. Well, how do you think God feels when he's got all of these people praying and very seldom, if ever, reading his word or reading his word in a devotional sense? There is nowhere in God's word that commands us to have daily devotions. We are commanded to be devoted, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourself. There's nowhere in God's Word that says we are supposed to have daily devotions. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. What kind of relationship, or how long would your relationship last with a spouse if you only had a daily devotion to him for 15, 20 minutes, or a half hour a day? The, la the relationship wouldn't last very long. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a call. It is a call to stop being religious and praying and start seeking the face of God and start developing a relationship, letting God teach you. You see, for too long we have had lies on our lips. We have had arrogance in our hearts. We've had blood on our hands and we have become friends of the world. And the word of God says in James 4.4, if you're a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. And that's why the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and present your body a holy and living sacrifice, which is your reasonable sacrifice, reasonable offering of sacrifice. We're not supposed to be conformed to this world. We're not supposed to walk, talk, or act like this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. And ladies and gentlemen, God is calling us now to forsake everything, to get into the ark, and Jesus is that ark. As Noah was, was protected in the days of the flood, so shall we be protected in the word of the living God, Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, multitudes and multitudes of Christians and religious people are going to go to hell and not understand why. Multitudes of, quote, prayer warriors are going to die and go to hell. Multitudes of YouTube celebrities and people behind pulpits and people that profess to be prophets and prophetesses are going to die and go to hell because they're not spending time in the Word of God to be obedient to, word, to the Word of God. Four years ago, the Lord spoke very clearly to me and He said He was heartbroken. And I said, Lord, why are you heartbroken? And He said, Christians are spending hours doing things for Jesus, spending hours talking about Jesus, but they're not spending hours with Jesus. I've stated this before and I'll state it again. God wants us to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to his words. He wants us to rest our ear upon his bosom and listen to the divine heartbeat of Jesus. And he wants us to wrestle like Jacob wrestled and allow God to change our life so that he can bring us into the covenant. Ladies and gentlemen, God is calling us to get to the word of God allow God to talk to us, and then he will answer our prayers because then we will be praying from pure motives. We will not have a hidden agenda. Do you realize that six times, six times in the book of John, Jesus says, ask whatever you wish in my name and I will do it. Six times he says those words in John chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, three times, uh, two times in each chapter. Well, the reason our prayers are not getting answered is because just like it says in Psalm 66 and Isaiah 59, we have sin in our hearts. We have blood on our hands. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 12 through 15, and God is not hearing us. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the call. The call is to repent, to turn from our wicked ways, to turn from our selfishness, give up our life, present our bodies a holy and living sacrifice, it is impossible to worship God without sacrifice. All pure worship comes with sacrifice. 
and it's dying to our flesh, dying to the self-nature, dying to our own desires, and living and moving and have our being in the will of Jesus. It is going to our Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane means wine press, and cry out, Abba, Father, so that we can shed our blood in striving against sin. That's why it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood and you're resisting or striving or wrestling against sin. And then also in Hebrews chapter 9, I believe it's 22, that says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. We have to prove to God that we're really sorry, that we mean business with God. God meant business with us when he sent his only begotten son to die and suffer for us, to shed his blood for us, to lay down his life for us. God is commanding us now, ladies and gentlemen, to lay down our life for him as he laid down our life. I close as I've closed before. It is impossible to love Jesus too much, but it's easy to love him too little. Ladies and gentlemen, seek the Lord while he may be found, because there's going to come a time he will not be. Thank you.